Hi everyone, this video is to help you get MAME up and running in Hyperspin with full joystick support. I had a lot of issues in setting this up myself, so I thought I'd make a video to help everyone um, get started with that. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that you set up the hierarchy structure for Hyperspin's installation correctly. Now most people install Hyperspin into, their, into the root of their C drive, which I have done here, but Hyperspin actually works anywhere just fine. The thing that you need to be aware of is simply just set up the, the directory hierarchy for Hyperspin correctly so that when certain files launch within Hyperspin, Hyperspin knows where to expect them. Um, in this case, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to set up Hyperspin into an external hard drive and I'm going to set it up in the root of the drive. So with that said, we'll go ahead and get started. So the first thing you want to do is create a folder called Hyperspin. In that folder, you want to create another folder or directory called Hyper Launch. In that same folder, we'll want to create another folder called Utilities. Going back into the Hyper Launch folder that we've created, we want to create a folder called Hyper Launch HQ. And then backing out to the Hyperspin folder that we created, we want to go back inside the Utilities folder and create another folder called X Pattern. Now that we've done that, we can start extracting the installation files for Hyperspin. These are all the files that you'll need to install Hyperspin. The first file that you'll need is the actual Hyperspin installation file, which is that. Currently it's at version 1.3.2.0. The second one that you'll need is Hyper Launch, as, long, as well as with the Hyper Launch Media, Hyper Launch HQ, and these two files here are there so that you can uh, get joystick navigation to work inside Hyperspin. Don's Hyperspin Tools is used so that you can pare down your Hyperspin, your your ROMs and MAMES so that's more easily manageable in Hyperspin. That said, we'll go ahead and start extracting some files. The first file that we'll want to extract is the actual Hyperspin ins installation file itself. We'll double click this in here, highlight all the files, and extract them directly into the directory that we just created for Hyperspin. Once that's done, we'll need to extract Hyper Launch and we'll browse the Hyper Launch folder that we created previously so that we can see the Hyper Launch files as they're being extracted into the Hyper Launch directory that we created. Once that's done, we want to extract Hyperlaunch's media, Hyperlaunch media, overriding the existing Hyperlaunch media folder that's already, that came with the Hyperlaunch extraction that we just did. So we'll browse to X Hyperspin, Hyperlaunch, and we want to overwrite this media directory and all of its contents with the one that's in the updated media um, installation which we've downloaded from the Hyperspan website. Now that's that's done, we we'll want to create we we'll want to extract the Hyperlaunch HQ files into the Hyperlaunch HQ directory which we previously created. Okay. From here, we want to go back into Hyperspin. We want to go into the utilities folder that we created in the XPatter 
folder that we've created. We want to move the XPatter executable file into the Hyperspin Utilities XPatter directory that we've created. And once that's done, we'll go back to the, we'll go one up into the hierarchy, back into the utilities directory, and we'll extract um, the Hyperspin startup exe file. Back in the Hyperspin folder, what we will need to do is go into the emulators directory and either create a directory for main, then move our main files into this directory, or um, if we already have it saved, we can simply just move the entire directory into the emulators directory underneath our Hyperspin directory. Since I've already done that, I'll go ahead and delete this folder since there's nothing in it. And I'll move my main folder, which I, which I have stored here, which contains my main executable and all my ROMs. And I'll move that directly into Hyperspin, Emulators, Paste. And there we have it. All the files that we need to set up main in Hyperspin are all there. There's one other application that we'll need to make sure that Hyperspin want or MAME is is uh, set up efficiently in Hyperspin and that's Don's Hyperspin tools. And for Don's Hyperspin tools you need to make sure that you install it directly in the Hyperspin directory that you've created previously. So we'll go ahead and do that. And there it is. Now we can close our compression application for the time being. We don't need it anymore. Okay, so the first thing that we'll need to do is go into our Hypersyn folder and launch HyperHQ. We'll uncheck this box because we'll run it, be running this application often. Once HyperHQ is launched, what we'll want to do is determine whether or not we want main uh, to launch as its own emulator, as a single emulator in Hyperspin, or if we want to have it launched with all the other um, emulators that are supported in Hyperspin. For the purpose of the demonstration, I'm going to set this to just main by clicking single. In here, um, typically what you'd want to do is set full screen to be enabled, but for the purpose of this demonstration, We'll leave it as being windowed when um, hyperspin launches. All these settings for the time being are fine. Um, so it's, we'll have to go back in here later and set certain things up. But for the time being, we'll just go ahead and go into the wheel settings for main and make sure that we set this up correctly. So we need to define the executable path for main. We'll do that by clicking this folder and browsing to where we've set up main. And in the case of this demonstration, we've set it up in X, Hyperspin, Emulators, Main, and the MAME executables in that folder. Then we need to set up the ROM path similarly. It's under X, Hyperspin, emulators main ROMs and that'll set the ROM path for main now you need to specify the extension the file extension for all your main ROM files so for main it is the extension is zip and 7-zip Once that's done, all these things we can leave as defaults, and we can exit out of HyperHQ for now. Once we've done that, we need to go into the HyperLaunch folder, into HyperLaunchHQ, and launch HyperLaunchHQ. We'll uncheck this. 
The first thing it's going to ask is because typically Hyperspin is installed into the C drive. Since we've installed it in the X drive, it's going to ask us where exactly is our Hyperlaunch EXE file. With the OK button, and in this case we've installed it under X. We have it under Hyperlaunch, and then we'll hit OK. Once that's done, Hyperlaunch HQ will launch. We'll minimize the screen for the time being. And we'll move this Hyperlaunch HQ into view. Um, Hyperlaunch HQ will open into <clears throat> the general globals tab. And we'll want to leave it there for the time being. So the first thing we want to do is in globals, we want to go to emulators, scroll down to main. Double click it and specify the path for the executable file for main, which is in X, hyperspin, emulators, main. We want to specify the ROM extensions, which are here. We've done that previously. Now everything's done. The main AHK file is set by default. So we'll go ahead and close this out. Now we'll select main from the list of supported emulators. Under the emulators tab for the main, we want to set the ROM path. It's under X, emulators, main, ROMs. Then we want to set the default emulator for main, which will be main global. There should be only one option there. We'll double click that. And then from there, we want to specify the parameters for that main emulator. The name will be main. The path, again, needs to be specified. The ROM extensions, we need to enter zip and 7-zip. The modules folder is main AHK or auto hotkey file. The GUI path, we can leave alone. All other things we can leave alone. We can hit save. That'll close out. Then we can go to the games tab and see if we can launch main from, from hyperlaunch we'll click the blue play button here it'll search for all the games in your rom path now you won't be able to see this but we'll go ahead and select the game and test launch it and uh, since main opened up full screen you were we weren't actually able to see the game launch but i can tell you that it launched successfully so at this point we're good We've set up MAME in Hyperspin correctly. So even though we've test launched MAME out of HyperHQ and we know that it works correctly, we also need to make sure that Hyperspin launches correctly um, directly from the executable file. So what we'll do is bring up our Hyperspin directory once again and launch Hyperspin directly from the EXE file. So we'll double click the Hyperspin EXE file to see if Hyperspin actually launches. And it does, which is good. So now that we're in MAME, what you'll notice is that all 8,000 plus games in MAME are listed here. And there's only so many that we'll actually play. So eventually what we're going to have to do is pare down the list of over 8,000 MAME games to just the ones that we actually have or we want to play. And I'll show you how that's done later. But first things first is that we want to make sure and... Uh, we want to make sure that we're actually able to launch our main games directly from the Hyperspin front end. So we'll select a, ra a game at random and launch it. And I expect this to fail the first time, but let's go ahead and see what happens. So as you can see, it failed. So we'll go ahead, exit out of the Hyperspin front end for the time being, 
and fix the problem. So the reason why it failed is because we installed Hyperspin into the X drive where the typical installation of Hyperspin is expected to be installed in the C drive. So what we need to do is go into our X drive installation of Hyperspin and edit a settings file in Hyperspin that's under Hyperspin settings and the file that we need to edit is the settings INI file. You'll notice that the hyperlaunch path for Hyperspin is set to C Hyperspin hyperlaunch because typical installations are to the C drive but since we installed it to an external drive which we've labeled X we need to change that so we'll go ahead and save and close out of that file. Now we'll go back to the Hyperspin folder launch hyperspin and try to launch a game okay I can tell you that the game launched successfully even though you weren't able to see it the reason why you weren't able to see it because the main opened up into full screen so we're actually good here so at this point we have correctly set up main we're able to launch main games, but however, we are not able to navigate inside the Hyperspin front end with anything but our keyboard. The keyboard navigation works, but when we try to navigate in the Hyperspin front end with our joystick, nothing works. And so that's what we're going to do next. So at this point, if you have a joystick, go ahead and plug it in. Okay, make sure that your joystick is plugged in for this part. If it's not plugged in, setting up a joystick to work with hyperspin front end will just not work um, so our joystick's plugged in so to set up the joystick what we're going to do is go ahead and launch hyper launch hq once in hyper launch hq what we want to do is make sure that we're in the global listing under the generals tab under third party what we want to make sure is that our X pattern path and executable is located in the correct place. Um, as you remember earlier, what we did was we installed the X pattern exe file into our hyperspin directory utilities X pattern, and that's where hyperlaunch HQ expects it to be. We'll go ahead and select it to let hyperlaunch HQ know that it's in the right place. Um, the other thing that we have to be uh, concerned about is Joydy Key. We don't have that installed. It's not necessary for navigating through the Hyperspin front end, so you'll see it's being X'd out. That's okay. Don't worry about it. The front end profile name is by default Hyperspin. That's good. We'll leave it as is. And the front end profile is set to false. We need to set that to X pattern. Okay, once that's done, we can go, we're done with this tab and we're done with the screen and we can go over to the key mapper tab. In the key mapper tab we'll need to select the hyper tab under the key mapper tab and what we'll see is that there's some profiles that are set up here um, already. These are default profiles for some common game uh, common game pads or controllers which people may have. If you have one of these controllers great if you don't you know what they're worthless. So my controller is none of these and uh, none of these profiles will work with my controller so we'll go ahead and delete these it's not a big deal we'll delete them both and if we ever need them back what we can do is extract these profiles from the hyper launch um, setup file um, there's a directory in that setup file called profiles and we'll we'll simply just want to extract the profiles um, folder in the hyper launch zip file into our hyper launch directory but we really don't need it um, so to set up a x pattern profile so that it works with the hyperspin front end what we need to do is select from here that we're going to create a front end profile now once we create a front end profile what it's going to try and do is launch x pattern We'll go ahead and let that run. Um, we're going to go ahead and go through all these prompts. We'll go ahead and hit start, 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 start. We want it to launch from that program location, so that's fine. We'll hit start. And do we want to reinstall it anywhere? No. We'll, we always want to launch it from that.
program location that we put it into so that's fine and do we want to associate files of course we do so we'll hit associate so we'll create a new layout and we'll save it as whatever your game controller name will be will be listed here and that's fine mine is USB gamepad so I'll have it simply labeled USB, USB gamepad and I'll go ahead and save it um, now that the uh, that the profile is set what we need to do is uh, edit in the settings now since we're setting up main we don't have analog sticks or anything like that we simply just have a d-pad and button so um, what you can do at this point here is to drop in a picture that looks like your stick so that you can make this a little bit easier it's not near it's not really necessary but um, for the purposes of this demonstration I'll go ahead and do that so let me open up a browser I'll close this down I have a picture of my controller it's actually a moss stick that I took a picture of I'll go ahead and copy the image minimize this and I'll paste it in under the image uh, option and there it is um, but just just be, just in case you don't really care for what this looks like you can simply clear it and uh, we'll just go as this <clears throat> we'll add in that picture later just to see what it looks like but we can still do this setup without it. it's not necessary so under d-pad we'll set enabled once it's enabled um, xpatter will ask us to um, execute the corresponding actions from your joystick so it wants me to hit up so off screen when we hit up on my controller now it wants me to hit down and then left and then right okay so now that's done it creates a d-pad here and I'll move that into position um, where typically you know this is where uh, arcade control setup would look like now we'll move to buttons and buttons what I'll go ahead and do is since I have a Street Fighter style controller what I'll do is hit the top three punch buttons so here is um, jab forward pierce punch and then I'll go ahead and move those into position Now I'll hit the kick buttons, short kick, medium kick, and roundhouse, and I'll move those into position. Then I have a start and select. That is the start or that is the select and this is the start Just make sure it lights up and then everything's fine now like I said we can go back and you know if we really want that image in we can add it in uh, we simply have to just make sure that the buttons that we placed earlier correspond to the button mappings on the image but as you can totally see it's not necessary the buttons still work even without the image there. It's, the image is simply just a reference guide that you can add to make your profiles a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Uh, but it's totally not necessary. But we'll do it here just for the purpose of the demonstration. There we go. Now that that's done, we can go ahead and hit OK. Now at this point, what we want to do is make sure that we save the profile. It's very important. If you don't do it, you're going to have to redo that step. All right. Now what we want to do is make sure that we assign hyperspins corresponding buttons to the buttons that we want um, to be mapped onto our controller. So if you don't know what hyperspins um, buttons are, the de default assignments for hyperspins buttons are, go ahead and... Uh, Launch Hyperspin HQ.
go to the controls tab and you can see that up down left right up down skip up skip down is left right all these keys here are mapped to certain functions within hyperspin so depending upon preference we're going to go ahead and uh, map them out um, so up of course is up down of course is down and uh, this little UI keyboard you can select the button in here or you can do it on your keyboard I think doing it on the keyboard is a little bit easier and that's what I'm doing off screen so right is right and uh, as you can see to exit out of hyperspin it's the escape button so I want this button to be the escape button so I'll map that to escape and then to enter or to start the game it's enter and I want that button to be of course my start button you can map it as to whatever button you want um, the other buttons are skip number skip number up which is F skip number down which is V hyperspin I really don't know what that function is but that corresponds to space um, genre corresponds to the G button and then favorites to the L so I'll go ahead and map the skip up number which is F to this button here and the skip down number which is V to this button here and the genre button I'll map to the, the genre button I'll map here to G and the favorites button I'll map to this button which is L and then this button which is the spacebar and that takes care of all the corresponding uh, keyboard uh, navigation keys um, in hyperspin you'll notice that I have one button left um, that's totally not a big deal um, we'll just leave it blank as is so again, very important, I save this profile, which I've just created by hitting this button. And it'll ask me to save it under a certain name. So what name will I save it as? I will name it as P1, and we'll keep it as that, that naming convention. And we'll go ahead and save. We'll go ahead and close out a Hyperspin HQ. Now that that profile is set up, Now on your joystick, if everything went correctly, if you moved around the keys, I'm pressing down, and it shows here that I'm pressing down, I'm pressing up, or I'm pressing right, it seems that my joystick is working, I'm pressing the escape button, it shows that I'm pressing the escape button, I'm pressing the start button, which corresponds to the space bar, or to the return button, so that's working, and then I'm pressing the skip down, skip up buttons, the genre button, favorites button and the hyperspin button so everything is working which is great so we'll go ahead and close out the key mapper test and we want to do after we've created the hyperspin front end profile is create a default profile and that's done the exact same way exact same way so we'll just go through this quickly and we're going to test it and it works so everything is good there so we'll go ahead and close this out okay now that we set up the hyperspin front end um, profile and a default profile for hyperspin um, we need to set up a xpatter profile for main so here's an interesting thing about xpatter and main xpatter actually does not um, support main which is good news because we don't want to actually use an external key mapper to map our functions to our joystick in main because main has uh, functions that allow us to map our joystick functions directly in main which work extremely well so um, 
But the reason why we want to set up a profile in Hyperlaunch HQ is because we want to be able to allow Hyperspin when it switches from the Hyperspin front end to launching the main game to be able to have a profile that it can switch to. And then once we end the actual main game, it has a profile so that it can switch back so that we can navigate within the Hyperspin front end. So the whole process of creating a main expat or profile isn't to necessarily control um, your navigation within main. It'll set up so that we can have a profile that Hyperspin can switch to so that it doesn't interfere with our actual game navigation uh, for our joystick that we'll set up in actual main. I hope that makes sense, but we'll go ahead and do that. So, so make sure that you have MAME selected, the key mapper function selected, and you're in the expatter tab. So once you're in the correct location, you want to set up an emulator profile. So the emulator profile that we're setting up for is for the MAME emulator. So we'll double click that. And uh, this uh, gamepad profile pops up and again we don't actually want any keys to be mapped here because we're going to be setting up our navigation keys inside MAME itself. Um, so we want to do is sort of set up a, a dummy or blank profile here. Um, uh, a weird thing about XPad it doesn't let you save anything until you actually attempt to make an assignment of one of the buttons. So what we'll do is click one of these buttons but instead of mapping an actual keyboard stroke to it we'll select none and then once we do that uh, the save button becomes available so, so we can save the profile and it's saved as p1 okay so now that we've created this sort of blank profile we'll go ahead and test it make sure that we move our controller and press the keys none of the functions work and if we've done that correctly and nothing shows up here in the key mapper test then we've done it all correctly so at this point we can close out the key mapper test and we can go back into hyperspin and launch hyperspin and at this point we're, we should be able to navigate with the joystick and launch main So there's hyperspin. <laughs> ha, I was just joking. So I knew that was going to fail. And um, the reason why it fails is because for some strange reason, even though hyperlaunch hyper is designed to... Um, add all this functionality into hyperspin which hyperspin either doesn't support correctly or doesn't support at all we still are not able to navigate in the hyperspin front end after we've done all that so there's one more step that we have to do um, to make sure that we're able to navigate in the hyperspin front end with our joystick and that step is to use this hs startup exe file so we previously installed it into our xDrive Hyperspin Utilities. What we need to do for the first time is execute it once. Once it's executed, it'll create a startup INI file. What we need to do is open up that INI file so that we can edit it um, so that it starts when we launch, so that it starts up XPatter when we launch um, Hyperspin. So since our installation of Hyper Launch is to the X drive, what we need to do is make sure that we change the default installation from C to X. If you installed it to C, you can leave that alone. And then program underscore two underscore one target underscore one. What we need to specify here is the profile that we've created for the front end. So in XPatter, so that profile we've saved is in the XPatter location. And we want to make sure that we specify this file to launch when Hyperspin starts. 
so I'll select the file and I selected F2 I'm going to copy this name I am going to select the Windows URL um, I'm going to select the Windows URL bar at the end of that address I'll put a backslash and then type in the name that we just copied and then from there we will copy the location and the name of the file and, then, and you can simply type this all in but it's simply just easier to copy and paste and that's what I just did so hopefully by showing you that it's going to make life a little bit easier for you so in the INI file we'll put the location of this expatter profile under program to run target one and we need to change the key mapper enabled from being false to true and we want to make sure that the program to run starts off we want to hide it okay so everything is good we can go ahead and save this file and close it now we'll go back into our hyperspin directory and we need to launch hyper hq and specify that when we launch hyperspin um, the hs startup file starts with hyperspin so that we can get joystick navigation in hyperspin So it's in our X drive, hyperspin, utilities, and the file that we want to start up with hyperspin is hsstartup.exe. Okay, once that is set, we can close out of hyperhq and launch hyperspin. Now with that, if you need anything on the joystick, it exits out of the intro screen, and now we are able to navigate in the hyperspin front end. Now, once we're in the hyperspin front end, we can launch any game that we may have. And then once we launch any game, we can simply hit the tab button on our keyboard um, in main. And then from there, we could uh, map the corresponding joystick inputs um, to MAME's functions. So that pretty much takes care of setting up MAME to work with hyperspin with joystick navigation. The last thing that we really want to do is make sure that we pare down this ridiculously long list of over 8,000 main games into a more manageable list. Um, mostly the games that we have, and more specifically the games that we want to play specifically. So the next portion of this tutorial will cover just that. So we'll go ahead and exit out of the hyperspin front end. And launch Dawn's hyperspin tools. So you remember previously that we installed Don's Hyperspin tools into directly into our Hyperspin folder. And the reason why we did that is because Don's Hyperspin tools looks for um, specific locations of various files within the Hyperspin installation. And if it doesn't find those files where it expects to find them, it does not work. So it's very important that when you extract Don's Hyperspin tools, you extract it to its own folder within your Hyperspin folder uh, installation okay so the program in Don's hyper tools that we want to launch is Don's hyperspin list generator so in Don's hyperspin list generator what we want to do is set up an XML list for main that contains 
only games that are relevant to us. Once we have that list of the uh, list of games that are relevant to us and that we actually have installed on our hard drive, we can then parse that list down further to more specific games like by genre, um, by favorites, or whatever it is that you like. But first things first is we need to create a general list that contains a listing of the main games that we're pretty much interested in playing only and not certain games which we know we will never play or games that we don't work or games that we simply don't have. So first thing that we want to do is create what's called the mamelist.xml file. So what this does is basically there's a stored procedure within the main exe file that contains a listing of all the games that that current version of MAME supports. And it outputs a list in XML format that lists the game and the corresponding attributes of that game. Um, what genre that game belongs to, how many controllers or players that game supports, how many buttons that game supports, when it was made, what manufacturer, what rating it has, um, is it a driving game, things like that. All these things are generated from the main list XML file. So what we'll do is go ahead and generate that. Once you hit the generate button, it asks us where to save that file. And um, we've created a directory in our Don's Hyper Spin Tools uh, installation called Hyperlist. And uh, we'll want to go ahead and save that file in that Hyperlist directory. I have that file here already, so I'm going to go ahead and overwrite it. And it takes a little bit for the file to get generated. Don't worry about it. Um, it'll be done in no time. Now that it's done, go ahead and click OK. Um, then you'll want to input in the Hyperspin source XML file. So you retrieve that file from hyperlist.hyperspin-fe.com. You'll scroll down to the listing for main and then download the corresponding XML file. I've already done that and I've stored it to our hyperlist folder so I'll go ahead and input that now. Um, these other two options here um, one which is exclude the exclude which creates the exclude list of games that you want to exclude and the other one which is the output file which you'll input into hyperspin that allows hyperspin to read what games you want it to have listed in the hyperspin UI um, one of these files is sort of like, you don't really need it unless you need some sort of file for reference or you need to use a separate program to delete the ROMs that you don't want. But this file here is what's really needed to pare down that listing of main games that are in the Hyperspin UI or wheel so that it makes it so it's a lot less cumbersome to navigate through 8,000 plus games. Uh, but we'll we'll decide where we want to save that to later. So for the time being we'll hit scan. And what the scan button does is it scans your hard drive or your ROM, um, the ROM files that you have in the, on your hard drive against the list to determine which of those ROMs in these two lists you actually have. Once that is done, Don's list generator will show out of the 8,944 games that are possible in main how many of those games you actually have. I actually have the complete set for main so it shows that I have 8,944 out of 8,944 games and I don't have any games. There's none that I don't have. See when I select no it still shows up. Okay so that's good. Alright so I'll take you through the thought process as to how I pare down this list. Um, the first thing I want to do is select all the games. And uh, I want to I want to include every game first. And I'll do that by hitting selecting one of the games, selecting control A which highlights everything, and then selecting control F which tells the hyperspin the list generator to include every game. Oops, I'm sorry. Control A, Control F. Yeah, that puts it onto our output list. That's great. That's exactly what we want. Um, 
and it's always easier to include everything and exclude the stuff that you don't want rather than to exclude everything and then include the stuff that you do want because one list is going to be greater than the other um, so in the beginning what you want to do is include everything and then exclude the stuff that you don't want so everything right now is included out of the 8,000 or so games I am including everything now it's now let's filter down so the first thing that I'm filtered down from is bootleg games now if it's a bootleg game I don't care to play it so you may uh, but I don't so I'm gonna go ahead and type in bootleg into the description and it shows all the games that have bootleg in the description I'm gonna click one of the games select control A and then control E to exclude them now all those games are now excluded so out of 8,000 almost 9,000 games 747 of them were bootlegs I don't want those games so I'm going to exclude them the next way that I'm going to filter games is by genre so there's one particular genre that I know I will never play and that's these Mahjong games so every single Mahjong game in main based upon the genre here I will know I will never play so I'm gonna select one game hit control A and then hit control E now I've excluded every single Mahjong game the next set of games um, that I want to exclude are play choice games the reason why I want to exclude play choice games is um, I'm creating an arcade cabinet uh, and I want to keep it true to the arcade roots. Um, so, play choice games are actually Nintendo Entertainment System games um, that were ported to the arcade um, way back in the 80s. I don't really care to play those in my arcade cabinet, but there are a couple play choice games that are actually fun, but I don't want to play the rest of them. So, what I'll do is type in play choice and it shows me all the play choice games I'm gonna hit control A, select a game, hit control A and then hit control E now out of these games that are excluded I'll admit there's a couple games I wouldn't mind playing in my arcade cabinet one of them is um, Castlevania so I'll highlight it and hit control F to include it another game is Gradius actually I like the NES version better than I like the arcade version Another game is Metroid and Mike Tyson's Punch Out. Oh yeah, I gotta keep that one. Pro Wrestling, <laughs> RC Pro Am. The home version of Rygar is actually better than the arcade version, so I want to include that. And then I want to include the Super Mario Brothers games. And all the other games I don't care about. So, uh, I know I contradicted myself by saying I don't want to include play choice games, but some of these games are <laughs> really fun. So, uh, let's just keep them in. The next set of games that I want to exclude are prototype games. I don't want to play any game um, that's a prototype. So, I'll type in prototype in the description. I'll select one of the games, select Control A, and then Control E to exclude all of those games. Um, now, most of the games in main are actually clones, so I don't want the clones, I just want to make sure I'm playing the parent games. So from there, um, under clones, by default, show parents and clones is selected, that basically means it shows every game. Now I want to show only the clones, and the reason why is I want to exclude the clones, so now that all the clones are shown, I select one game, I hit control A and then control E, and out of the 8,000, almost 9,000 games, 5,000 or so of those games are clones, so I've excluded 5,000 games, so it's a significant number of games that are now not being shown, so that's uh, going to help navigation within the 
hyperspin UI a great deal. Um, after that, what I want to make sure is that I uh, clear that filter by selecting show parents and clones. Okay. My cab is a two-player cab with joysticks. I don't have a wheel, I don't have a paddle, I don't have a light gun. So what I make, want to make sure is that I include only the games for which my cabinet is designed to play with. So from here, what I want to do is make sure that I exclude any game um, that doesn't allow me to control the game. So if it has a paddle under controls, if it has a paddle, I don't want the game. Select the game, control A, control E. If it has a gun, I don't want the game. If it has a dial, I can't control it. I don't want the game. Mm. And unfortunately, there's no drop down list here, so you kind of have to figure out what the value is that you want to exclude. And you kind of have to scroll down uh, to make sure that you do exclude it. So I don't want gambling games. So I'll say game. Gam. Now exclude those games. Then I'll remove that filter. And go on to the next one. I've already excluded Mahjong, so I have to do that again. Um, pedal. I don't have a pedal. So we exclude those. Double joystick is those games that use double joystick um, for control. Robotron and Smash TV. Um, I could set up player one and player two to do double joystick. So I actually want to keep those games. They're pretty fun. Ah, trackball. I don't have a trackball. I saw something called positional. Mm. Cops and robbers. Never heard of these games. There's some sort of control called positional. I don't know what that is. But I don't have any positional controllers anyway, so I'm going to exclude all those games. So I think that's it under controls. Um, there are a couple of games under trivia which I don't want to play. So I'm going to exclude trivia games. I could care less about them, so I'm going to exclude them. There's some that are listed under quiz. I don't care about them, I will exclude them as well. Also, there are these sex games, which I don't want to play. I'll 
exclude those. And then under rating, there are these strong sexual content games. I don't want to play those either. And it's not that, you know, I'm a prude or anything, but, you know, uh, things that rile you up sexually in the 80s doesn't really compare to what we have today. Uh, <laughs> I mean, jeez. <laughs> We have the internet. They have uh, video images. Doesn't compare. So yeah, I totally don't want to play those games. Um, uh, ah, four-player games. So there's a couple four-player games that are parents, and uh, um, I want to exclude all four-player games. Um, so if there's a game that has uh, three, so let's say. 20 players, actually, we're going to exclude all those games. Except for um, Teenage, because we excluded um, the clone which is the two-player version. The four-player version is the parent, which we've excluded because we don't have a four-player um, cab. What we need to now do is put back in manually the two-player version that we want to play on our cab. So with that said, the version that we want to play is... Um, looks like it's a stuck version. That one, and Turtles in Time. That one. And there's another game which I prefer the Japanese version over the US version. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. So out of almost 9,000 games, um, in my output list, I pared that list down to 2,327. Now, it still seems a little bit long to me, because in the past I've gotten that down to close to 2,000. So there's some here that I'm missing. Uh, try to think of what those are. Genre... Oh, casino games. I don't want to play any casino games. Alright, so let's take a look at the list now. Twenty one hundred and thirty five. Okay, that list still seems a little bit long to me. Um, so, what else do we need to pair this down to? Oh, if the game is not um, fully sported in main, or the emulation isn't perfect, I don't, I don't want to play it. So, in emulation, um, if the status is imperfect, it might still play. Um, a good example of imperfect is Radiant Silver Gun. It plays perfectly almost. It's just somehow um, these main guys are real sticklers, so they list it as being perfect. So if the status is good and imperfect, I'm okay with that. But if the status is preliminary, I don't want to play it because it doesn't work. All right. So let's take a look at where that list is now. There it is, 2,067 out of 8,944 games. That's good. All right. So what I'll do is I'll save my configuration just in case I need to come back in later 
and uh, mess with this again. And I'll save it as main. And then I'll ex I'll ex I'll export my exclude file. I'll name it exclude. And I'll export my output this. And I'll name that for now output. And we'll go ahead and save the on hyperspin tools one more time. Yes. We'll go ahead and close this. Yes. We're sure. Alright, that's good. Now in in my list, the file that we need to use to make sure that we pare down the list of the games that are available in Hyperspin's UI to a more manageable list is the output list that we've created, which is this here. So we'll take this and we'll copy it. And we need to drop it into the Hyperspin directory database. So that's databases under Hyperspin. We need to go into main. And the Hyperspin list that Hyperspin uses to, gen to list all the games is this one here, which is main.xml. We don't want to delete it or anything like that, but we'll just rename it so that main does not read it. And we'll name it main.xml.old. Now main can no longer read it. We'll take the file that we created and we'll paste it in. And we'll change the name from output to main. Now, if we go into main, no longer will there be 8,000 games that are listed. There will be 2,000 games. And there you go. You, you noticed before there were like, 20 different clones for, you know, 10 yard fight, um, which is an old 80s game. Um, and now, there's only one listing of 10 yard fight, which is good. We got rid of all the clones. The only game that we show for 10 yard fight is the parent clone, which is good. Now from here, what we can do is then, is then use uh, Don's list generator based upon the the logic that I just explained to pare down the files a little bit further to generate um, genre files um, but in all actuality I don't like to play games based upon the genre I just like to play games that are my particular favorites so the L button or the button on your joystick which you map to L allows you to um, add a game to your favorites so um, now that you have a list of pretty much all the main games that are playable or that you want to play, you can now go in there and select a game that you know you'll play all the time. And it kind of behooves you not to exclude any game that you that you would normally not play because there's some rare gem, gems in main that you may have never played before but you might stumble upon later that uh, are great. And uh, it happens all the time because the collection of games in main is huge. Um, I just found a couple of games that I've never seen before in all my life and all the times I ever went to an arcade that I loved. So uh, you want to make sure that uh, you don't miss any opportunity to play a great game in Maine even because you've never heard or seen it before. So um, simply just want to exclude uh, a general listing of games that uh, you know that you you know you pretty much will never play those mahjong games, those adult games, those light game light gun games. But um, other than that, um, don't uh, don't limit yourself. So that's pretty much it. Um, be cool. Thanks.